So this was where some of the questions, which of the following statements is true? Um, I, if you remember, this was one of the first questions that we have in the diagnosis test. And the answer is none of the above are true. Why? Because as we watched before, cell walls are made of phospholipids. No, no, it's the cell membrane, the one that is made of phospholipid. The cell walls have a, a, a sugar, a polysaccharide, if you remember. Uh, okay, polysaccharide. Suppose that I wrote polysaccharide, and it's very clear. Okay, let's go for B. Only eukaryotics have cell membrane. This is a lie. Prokaryotics also have cell membranes. Mitochondria are found in plant cells. Are sorry, are not found in plant cells. This is a lie. This is wrong. Mitochondria are found both in plants and in animals. So mitochondria. So plants also also in addition to do photosynthesis, they also do respiration. D ribosomes are organelles that synthesize the RNA. This is wrong. They are in charge of the translation, but not of the synthesis of the RNA. So the answer will be E. And as we said first, remember cell wall has no phospholipid. Is the one that have it is the cell membrane. Uh, and all the other ones are wrong. Okay, in this question, they ask you about a type of protein. What type of protein is fully on one side or on the other side of the cell membrane? So if you remember, cell membrane here, here you have phospholipids as we watch in all the videos, but in between you have protein that are only in one side or the other side. They are not inside of the membrane. They are here. Uh, they are outside here attached. All ones will be completely across the membrane, and some of them will be inside of the membrane, but not crossing completely. So definitely, these three exist. This normal protein is not actually one of the answers. So the first thing that we do is reject that one. And if you think about this. That is only in one side, so they it means that they are in the periphery. So these will be the correct answer. So let's in the next slide I will show you a schematic that is much clearer. So here you have, as so we say, the peripheral proteins that they are not inside of the membrane. We have the integral or transmembrane protein that go from one side to the other side. So so they can be channels that allow some uh, molecules to go through. And you can also have not only integral transmembrane, but you can also have integral, integral proteins that they can be uh, monotopic. So they can be only in one side without crossing. They, they, they don't go all the way, they just go uh, from the hydrophilic to the hydrophobic part of the membrane. Okay, so summary, there are different different type of proteins. In this case, this uh, the, the answer is perif peripheral protein. Okay, in this question, which of the following is not a characteristic of the membrane? Okay, so A contain different type of proteins as we watch there are proteins that are outside, there are proteins that are crossing, there are proteins that are in one side or in the other side. Uh, here in the other periphery too. And uh, we have in the video, they show that there are so many types of proteins. So this one is correct. This one is correct. Uh, it is easily crossed by as a small non uh, molecules, non-polar molecules. This is correct. If you remember, they have no problem to cross. The ions are the ones who have problems, but the non-polar, uh, uh, so the ions are the ones who have problems. They need ion pumps, while the non-polar, they can easily cross. So this one is, so far we have two correct ones. So we are looking for a wrong one. So 
so far we haven't found it. It composed of a, a phospholipid bilayer, so we already talked about that, and you watch in the video, this is correct. Maintain the cell shape. This is not completely true because the cell membrane, so here you have the cell membrane, however, they are not controlling maintaining the cell shape. What is controlling and maintaining the, the cell shape is the proteins that are inside of the cell, the microtubules, the actin, the myosin. So all the proteins are actually are actually in charge of that. So this is the this is incorrect. And here, so all of these ones are true. Well, this one is false. So the question what which of the following is not a characteristic of the plasma membrane? So the answer will be D. This is the correct one. And if you have any doubt about the answer, here you can go in this section to your textbook and you can see here they talk about that. Here is where all the microtubules and actin and myosin proteins are located, regulating the cell shape. Also, here in this schematic, if you want, you can analyze it. Here I summarize what are the molecules that can cross. So as I said, ions cannot cross, while the small molecules, if they are not, if they are in charge, they can easily cross. Okay, which are the primary molecules making up the plasma membrane? So this one is super easy. So it will be phospholipids. Here, there, although we have protein, this is correct. The primary is, is definitely phospholipids. The nucleic acids are inside in the nucleus or inside, in the, inside of the uh, cytoplasm in prokaryotes. Pepti, these are a component of prokaryotic uh, cell walls, so this is not this is not a plasma membrane, so definitely the answer is very easy, and it will be A. Okay, so this question, which type of membrane protein, and this, I will talk a little bit about this, is responsible for a rapid water transport, and I will talk a little bit about this. So this question, you can just memorize and say, okay, uh, channel protein. But I'm going to try to give you a little bit more explanation so you understand why this one. So first thing that I want to tell you is that water, if you remember the video lecture, can go through the cell membrane through diffusion. So this is one way that the water can go through the membrane. The second mechanism is to use a membrane protein. And there is a specific protein that it was found a few decades ago that are called aquaporins that allowed to bring more water. Sometimes the cells need more water than only through diffusion. And the third mechanism, when they need much more uh, large amounts of water, you can just have foldings on the membrane and bring large amounts of water. So remember, there are three different mechanisms. And they, here they're asking you for the second mechanism, the aquaporins. And the aquaporins belong to a specific group that are channel proteins that we will talk in a second. But all these concepts that we hear here, uniporter, what is uniporter, antiporter, symporter, and I'm sure that you at least remember this one. Yeah, so that ATP power pumps, and you remember the sodium potassium pump, that is that you use ATP and remember this the uh, this uh, ATP power pump the one the sodium and potassium pump is an example of an antiporter uh, movement in the cell so let's let's talk a, a little bit more about this so as I said there are different ways to bring uh, interchange materials. So here, for example, the unipotter take ions in only one direction. 
the sympotter take two molecules inside of the membrane and the antiporter, as we said in the sodium and potassium pump, they bring one inside while they take one outside. So this is the antiporter. And some of them will use ATP, like this one, to, to bring uh, to, for the interchange of materials inside of the cell. But what is the difference between protein channels and carrier proteins? So the both, there are two classes of membrane transport proteins that are, one are the protein channels and the other one the carriers and both, if you see here, they go, they go through the membrane. However, while the protein channels, they are mainly passive transport, so they don't need ATP. The carrier proteins can be active or they can be either passive. And here we have the three examples that we talked in the previous slide that uniporter, symporter, and antiporter as use the antiporter as you watch in the video lecture. So I'm going to give you more difference between the channel proteins that you see here in the left and the carrier proteins that you see here in the right. In the channel proteins, the one that we study in the course, there are many, are the most common is the aquaporin, and in the carrier proteins there are many, and we focus in more detail in the sodium potassium pump and uh, in well the channel proteins as you can see here they have a, a pore that it is the place that allowed uh, the water to go inside the carrier proteins undergo a uh, conformational change like the one that we watch that allow the protein to change to be able to attract better to have a better affinity to or sodium or potassium. Uh, in the same way, the channel proteins, they are ion selective and may be gated to regulate the passage of, uh, of the ions or water in this case, while the carrier proteins will only bind to a specific molecule in the case that we, this it will be to the sodium or to the potassium. And our two differences are that the channel proteins move along the concentration gradient, so they don't, are not active transport, as we said before, while the carrier proteins, they move against the gradient, so they need to spend ATP, like in this case, in the sodium potassium pump. And our difference is that uh, the channel proteins uh, are much faster uh, way of transport than the carrier proteins. So the aquaporin is much faster than the sodium potassium pump. Here you just let the water to go inside while this one you have to you have to undergo a conformational change to bring some uh, sodium and then release it to then bring potassium and then release it. So these the channels will be uh, much faster. And this is a movie that can help you to uh, understand in more detail the sodium potassium pump that if you want you can watch. If not, you can skip it if you already watch the one that I already explained. The sodium potassium pump is an active transport mechanism. Three sodium ions bind to the protein channel and an ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the channel that in turn drives the ions through the channel. One phosphate group from the ATP remains bound with the channel. The sodium ions are released on the other side of the membrane outside of the cell, and the new shape of the channel has a high affinity for potassium ions, and two of these ions now bind to the channel. This binding again causes a change in the shape of the protein channel, and this conformational change releases the phosphate group on the cytoplasm side. This release allows the channel to revert to its original shape 
and as a result, the potassium ions are released inside the cell. In its original shape, the channel has a high affinity for sodium ions, and when these ions bind again, they initiate another cycle. The important characteristic of this pump is that both sodium and potassium ions are moving from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. That is to say, each ion is moving against its concentration gradient. This type of movement can only be achieved by the constant expenditure of ATP energy. Calcium ion channel, causing the calcium ion channel to open. Calcium ions diffuse into the cell and combine with calmodulin. The combination of calmodulin and calcium produces the response of the cell to the ligand. Phosphorylase activity removes a phosphate from the guanosine triphosphate, leaving guanosine diphosphate bound to the alpha subunit. The inactivated alpha subunit separates from the calcium ion channel and the channel closes. The alpha subunit recombines with the gamma and beta subunits, and the G protein recombines with the receptor. Okay, now... Uh, let's answer this question. Which of the following substances normally fail to cross the cell membranes under any circumstances? And so the answer of this one is very easy. Here I show you some of the molecules that can cross and cannot cross. So, for example, gases can cross, so oxygen can cross, oxygen and CO2. And this is why we can do. Uh, respiration can take place because they can diffuse the gas without spending energy water small molecules small polar molecules like water and ethanol can cross very easily hydrophobic molecules can also cross however dna dna cannot cross if you see and this is very important because for example a virus here, a virus here, you will have DNA and the virus is not able to cross. You need to have um, special proteins that it will attach to all the proteins in the membrane and in that way the, the DNA can cross and get inside of the cell. If the DNA was able to cross, we will have even more problems to uh, to infect as the cells will be infected much faster than now. So remember, DNA doesn't cross. Viruses need uh, special, uh, special proteins, special uh, envelopes that allow them to, and a special machinery that allows to uh, infect cells and to cross the membrane. So answer, definitely the only potential answer is E. And if you want to apply to medicine or you want to know more about and you're interested in research or in biology, this is a key topic that it will affect our future. That is right now we are affected because there is a virus that is infecting our cells, that is infecting during a pandemic. What scientists have hypothesized and now is true and we are working on that is instead of for example using we have if we remove this gene from the virus and we add for example a gene that we need so for example if somebody suffer from cystic fibrosis mm -hmm, and we just need to replace this gene what about if we go and cut this gene remove the bad gene and put the new gene here and we infect the people now with this virus so the people can have now when the virus infect the cells now they have the right copy of the gene and this technique has been been successful in, in some cases in some type of cells 
um, however, is, is, is still under development. So there was the first therapy to cure cells, uh, to cure some disease, uh, some type of blindness. Um, it's a still, the only problem that we have now is that it's very expensive. However, this could be the medicine of the future. One of the side effects is that in the same thing that with the coronavirus that we think that affect the, mainly the lungs, the problem is that some of the virus in some people can affect mainly the, the, the lungs, but they can also affect other type of cells. So they can infect cells that we don't need to infect and this can create a problem. Another problem it could be that if you are still infecting somebody with a virus, so what could be a problem that the immune system can go and you create, create a terrible immune response. The body can feel that it's being attacked and you can have a, an immune response that can lead to death. So there is still a lot of work done and there is a lot of work uh, in this gene therapy. I'm going to show you a small video that you can watch that is a fascinating topic because it's a fascinating topic. But if you think this will be the, the be one of the best ways to cure cancer, why? Because cancer is a disease that involves faulty genes because we get old. So the idea could be just to replace our old genes that have mutation. If this gene has a mutation, has a mutation. So what about if we bring a virus with the new gene that is good? We cut this one and we replace for the new one, or we are able to paste it in an old part and now we have the right gene. It's still, as I told you, in some cases this is very theoretical. However, they have been diseases that have been cured using this technique. And I'm not going to get more into that. I'm going to show you this small video. And, and if you're interested, you can read more about it. Now, this question that is very easy that maybe you know already from high school. What is diffusion? And um, I'm not going to get a, a lot into this topic because I'm sure that you know. If you have doubts, you can go to this part of the video lecture and watch the video again if you have any doubt. But the answer is uh, when molecules move from a, a high concentration to a low concentration to allow to have a dynamic equilibrium. The picture below is an example of so this is also very easy. It will be an example of diffusion. So again, they are moving from a high concentration to places where there is a low concentration until they achieve the equilibrium. And one potential question of the, your lab test, it could be to talk about diffusion of two solutes. So for example, what happens when you have a molecule like a dye? When you go and when you have one solute, is that you find the you go from high concentration to low concentration, like here, until you achieve the equilibrium. But what do you think that happens when you have the diffusion of two dyes? Yeah, when you have another one here, another one here, what is what do you think that is happening? So I might give you, if you, you have to draw the diffusion of the two solutes, solutes using the following symbols. And this is a, a diagram that appeared in your textbook. So the answer will be the following. So you will have a net diffusion uh, in opposite direction. In orange, you will go in this direction, while in purple, it will go in the opposite direction. And slowly, the net diffusion start getting uh, smaller until you achieve the equilibrium in both sides. And this is the diffusion of two solutes. So remember that. So if you want, you can study it for one of your tests. Uh, okay, this one is also very easy. Uh, osmosin is the movement of what type of molecule? So super easy. So I don't think that you have problem with this. Uh, with this uh, particular topic about the uh, osmosis on water balance. So if you have any doubt, you can go to this part of your video lecture. 
there I go and explain the osmosis and of course the answer here will be water so again another super easy question during osmosis uh, what happened proteins are built so for sure not waters move when energy is used no large and oddly shaped molecules move across the cell membrane so it's for sure not so the only option in is this one and again i'm not going to get into a lot of detail these questions are very easy and if you watch the videos i think that will be very easy so this is the answer if you have questions you can ask me later or you can go through the videos and the video lectures but i don't want to, to spend a lot of time in something that i'm sure that you most of you understood and the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable semi membrane is called so of course it will be not cell wall no diffusion no respiration this is really easy it will be osmosis here again and something that it could be more difficult that i might ask you in the lab test uh, is these type of examples of tenacity that is what we see what we study with the um, onions this concept of, of when you have hypertonic hypertonic solutions and hypotonic solutions so i might ask you something like that so in addition to try to identify some of the figures i can also uh, ask you questions about that so you analyze what is going to happen so go on and study these type of diagrams that i already explained when something is isotonic when something is hypotonic that can they can get water and they can gain water and when this is hypertonic that they can lose water so i might ask you something like that with uh, with different examples.